Good morning and a very, very warm welcome to everybody this bright and beautiful Saturday morning. It is indeed bright and beautiful at the Funky Rainbow office because the books that we're going to showcase today are part of our Fab Fabrics Bazaar. Now, the thing is, you know, you can, you, everybody knows that fabrics in India are in so many hues and colors. And naturally, that made our entire week fairly colorful, bright, and beautiful. And we hope to, you know, spread that color here, there, everywhere through this, uh, through our Fab Fabrics Bazaar. As always, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, uh, you know, be it on our Facebook feed or on YouTube or on Instagram, first off, a very, very warm welcome to all of you. But also to say, do, uh, you know, check out our website, www.funkyrainbow.com. All the books that we're going to feature in the bazaar today. And, you know, often we have more books than we can speak about. So, uh, you know, the books are uh, up on the website. You need to click on the tab that says bazaar. And there will be a drop down menu that says fab fabrics and all the books that we have gathered together for this, uh, for this uh, wonderful bazaar. Mm, you know, are available there at the, uh, you know, at, a, at the click of a button. Now, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the link has, of course, come up on the page. You can also email us at funkyrainbowmail at gmail.com if any of these books interest you. You could also WhatsApp us at 9900495665. However, we always, uh, you know, ask all, uh, you know, all you book lovers out there to process as much as possible out of the website because it's just easiest that way. That said, again, a very warm welcome to all of you to our Fab Fabrics Bazaar, where we've curated a collection of Indian children's books that focus on fabrics, weaves, looms, uh, you know, uh, different artistic traditions of India and, uh, you know, on clothes per se. In fact, there are two, three kinds of, uh, you know, fabric books that we have uh, and we've sort of categorized it uh, into. There are books that absolutely focus on our artistic uh, traditions, on our weaving traditions. And there are books that, uh, you know, showcase these beautifully by way of fiction or nonfiction for children of all age groups. There are also books that have actually been embroidered or sewed or stitched. And we have some of those books in our collection as well. We also have books where, uh, you know, the protagonists, uh, you know, there is a focus on clothes. Uh, maybe the protagonists want to wear something or they don't want to wear something. So three different kinds of uh, you know, books that, uh, you know, that showcase fabrics in different ways make up the theme. I mean, make up the books that we are going to focus on in our bazaar. We absolutely have a wonderful guest who's going to join us a little later in the day. And I will introduce her closer to when she's going to come live on the show. I do want to say that, you know, the whole idea for the bazaar, uh, you know, came to us from, it was Muttama's suggestion, you know, when we did a food, a good food bazaar last week, when we sort of focused on uh, children's books featuring foods of different kinds and a, a food in its social, socio-cultural context as well, basically, uh, you know, uh, we also knew that, you know, that we are gearing up for a big festival season in India, starting today and going on up to perhaps, uh, you know, mid-January festivals of all kinds celebrated by different kinds of people. And, uh, you know, uh, we felt that we should usher in this festive cheer uh, by way of, uh, you know, when we did the food bazaar, that was one option. And Mutama had suggested, look, why don't we focus on fabrics and clothes? Because, uh, you know, it would just, you know, keep that theme going so wonderfully well. 
of course you know as always when there is a suggestion it uh, you know it takes some amount of work we had to figure out what books we could literally weave into this bazaar in uh, you know in interesting ways and uh, you know that's that's why we love doing this at funky rainbow because it gives us an opportunity to look and relook at books in so many exciting contexts so like i said uh, you know i mean uh, you know since mutama had suggested this we said yes we'll try and pick out this colorful collection of uh, children's books joan saldana you say good morning funkies thank you so much for being here at this colorful bazaar we have missed you the last two weeks and we do know you were caught up with a couple of other things delighted that you've joined us this morning so uh, like i said you know uh, it it gave us a chance to uh, revisit many many favorite books find some gems off our shelves and present them to you uh, as i said focused uh, you know divided into three different kinds of books books that focus on our craft traditions and our artistic traditions books that are actually stitched or embroidered and books where the protagonists want clothes uh, you know are asking for particular kinds of clothes so i am going to uh, you know uh Uh, hi nandini you say hi vidya mutama and sham a big hello to you from all of us at team funky rainbow thank you so much for joining us at the fab fabrics bazaar of course you know we all know i mean you know a, a piece of fabric in india is a story in itself really right i mean i'm sure it is true of fabric traditions all over the world but in india especially uh, especially so because you know every every state every district every town every village has uh, you know weaving traditions that Uh, you know introduce something to the piece of fabric that makes it really special that tells a story and often often i mean i know that you know when we studied history uh, you know they did uh, when they were doing the excavations of the indus valley civilization uh, you know good morning avyuk uh, lovely to see you here this morning thank you so much for joining us i hope ameya nair is there and divya menon too uh, so you know when they excavated at the indus valley civilization they did find needles stitching needles made of different kinds of material whether it was bone whether it was stone you know and which meant our uh, you know uh, fabric and uh, traditions go back so many 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 centuries ago so the thing is and you know any piece of fabric you know weaves in mythology weaves in folklore weaves in history weaves in uh, you know uh, we, we just you know brings in so many facets that one can introduce to children and fortunately we do have uh, you know books that reflect that and you know books that uh introduce artistic uh, traditions and weaving traditions that can be used with children in so many exciting ways these diverse uh, approaches to reading that's what keeps children really excited and really interested in a book and we really hope we have a nice i mean you know you enjoy the collection that we have put out for you I want to start off again uh, you know saying uh, this is the start of a big festive season that goes on till mid January with celebrating different kinds of festivals celebrating Navratri Diwali celebrating Eid celebrating uh, Christmas ce celebrating Sankranti there's just you know it's delightful the diversity of India's uh, you know festival traditions so i would like to wish everyone uh, you know a wonderful navratri it's the first day of navratri and we really hope this festive season brings all of you a huge bounty of books uh, uh sorry uh okay all right yeah so there is of course our bookwali diwali uh, uh you know uh, announcements that have gone up on the funky rainbow uh, website and on our social media pages these are gift boxes of books that we have created for this festival season 
So, uh, you know, uh, do take a look at uh, the different gift boxes. We really believe that lighting up someone's life with a gift of books is possibly the best way to celebrate diverse festivals. This is our offering for Diwali, I mean, for Dashera and Diwali, but we will most certainly be offering it for a whole host of other festivals going forward. These boxes have been curated for different age groups, starting from, uh, you know, the youngest of readers going on to adults as well. And we have uh, gift boxes uh, sort of put out for different age groups with just picture books, with chapter books, with books for middle grade readers, with books for young adults and adults, and also a family pack. Do consider, uh, you know, gifting. If you are in a mood to gift something to friends and family, do consider picking up our Book Wali Diwali gift boxes. Before I start, and uh, you know, like I said, the you know every piece of fabric usually has a beautiful story woven into it, and I do want to show you photographs of one special sari that Mutama, uh, you know, brought for us uh, the other day at the office, and uh, I'm going to very quickly just this is a sari that you know she um, got which is uh, so special to us and which sort of, uh, you know, really encompasses the story behind every loom, every weave and every fabric. This is a sari that has, uh, you know, used text by Tagore, by Rabindranath Tagore on its body. Of course, these beautiful pictures that are imprinted on the sari are pictures of Kolkata. And this, uh, you know, uh, these words that he has written of this very, very, uh, you know, rousing poem, which he wrote when, uh, you know, Lord Curzon partitioned Bengal in 1905. He instantly came up with a song, with a poem that, uh, you know, was, was, was sent out a message to the British saying that, you know, uh, the meek will rise, the weak will rise up. Uh, you know, against you. And it has been so beautifully by, uh, you know, a weaver incorporated into a sari right in Tagore's own handwriting. I mean, we felt we should showcase the sari, uh, you know, simply because it brought together the best, or it, it brings together the best of our handicraft traditions and our literary traditions. This poem, which is called, uh, you know, Bidir Bado Kat Betumi, like I said, was written in 1905. And it really literally, I have a, a, you know, a short translation, but you can research it, you can look it up yourself. It says, are you strong enough to revert the course of destiny? Do you think yourself strong enough? Rain our ups and downs audacity. Do you think yourself audacious enough to drag someone behind to hold them down forever? You lack such power and nor can you endure such a haul. I mean, it's such a powerful poem. And you're right, Joanne, it's so stunning. We can't tell you, you know, how uh, lovely it is that his words in his own handwriting have, uh, you know, gotten incorporated into this sari. In fact, the sari came to Mutama's uh, attention, uh, you know, through Remy Rusha, who's curating this beautiful collection of saris called Bloom. And she had sent it to her and when she brought it to our office we just felt that we should showcase it uh, for you to say how the very fabric of life is often contained in these fabrics uh, you know that we have yes of course you know uh, i know a storyteller friend wrote in and said are you all going to do this uh, bazaar in a sari i'm afraid there are so many wires and lights and you know equipment around here i'm dead sure we would have tripped and fallen but that said the sari is such a beautiful garment and we promise one day yes of course i do want to you know uh, i was going to say this the most handsome of us 
in this group of five people, as you can see, has effortlessly worn a sari himself. And that is Sham modeling a Mekla Chador. In fact, Vijay Lakshmi Nagaraj, the author who's there in the photograph, uh, you know, she invited us to her house so she could teach us all to wear this beautiful sari from the Northeast called the Mekla Chador. One person in this entire group of friends didn't need any lessons and you can see how effortlessly well he's worn the sari just on his trousers so like i say uh, anu of course anu gumraju good morning and thank you so much for joining us and you can see how easily and effortlessly sham has worn the mekla chador we do promise to do a bazaar in a sari at one point in time when we possibly have a nice recording studio or one of us in uh, you know one of you invites us to your beautiful place and we are you know away far and away from all these lights and all these wires that said uh, you know, uh, it's a beautiful garment and, you know, it holds in its weaves so many, many beautiful stories. Now, with that, I'll start off with the recommendations for the day. My first book for, a, uh, for the day is written by someone who has done such fabulous work in conserving and preserving and showcasing our artistic traditions. This is Biju Spins Some Magic written by the one and only Jaya Jaitley. The thing is, uh, you know, we all know that the Dastakar tradition, uh, you know, this, uh, you know, showcasing our various art and craft and uh, loom and, you know, weaving traditions for people in different cities. The whole idea of Dastakar was pioneered by Jaya Jaitley. And, you know, I don't know if it still exists, but there used to be a beautiful fabric a map of India where uh, the, that the Dastakar had created, you know, showing us different fabrics that came from different states. I mean, what a glorious heritage that is. Now, Biju Spins uh, Some Magic, written by Jaya Jaitley, is the story of a young boy uh, from Orissa whose father is a weaver. Now, you know, he they create beautiful fabrics to sell in different cities in India and abroad. And one time, Biju decides to accompany his father when he goes to Delhi to sell his beautiful uh, saris. Now, in the process, Biju meets, uh, you know, a, a young boy, a, a young boy who's his age, a city boy. And you know, this is a lovely story of how his skills, you know, his skills in weaving and, you know, his skills in art, you know, help him sort of, uh, you know, make friends with the boy and impress him in in quite astonishing ways. This one, of course, has been illustrated by Brahmara Nayak and it's been illustrated in the beautiful Patachitra style. It's fairly heavy on text, which means it's like a, you know, big story to read. So we would certainly recommend it for, uh, you know, um, let's say six, seven plus year olds, perhaps seven, eight plus year olds, even maybe not six, you know, uh, seven, eight plus year olds. But this is a fantastic uh, story talking about our, uh, you know, one of our weaving traditions and illustrated in an artistic tradition that is, uh, you know, uh, another very splendid one from India, the Patachitra style. Actually, this series by Jaya Jaitley has three other books, but they're not in print at the moment, uh, you know, from Pratham. This book has been published by Pratham. You could check them out at Story Weaver because they are part of the same series and bring some wonderful weaves to life. There's Manu Mixes Clay and Sunshine. There is uh, Mumta's Embroiders, Her Dreams, which is one of my favorites. And there's Bully and the Tiger. But at the moment, Biju spins some magic uh, up, uh, you know, available for sale at our Fab Fabrics Bazaar. It's priced at 50 rupees and, uh, you know, up uh, available for sale on our website. My next, uh, you know, recommendation for the day, and I have this book up in Canada. I'm afraid the publishers, Tulika, do not have the book available in English, but we know it's available in Hindi as well. It's a beautiful story called Hamreel Mai's Loom. It is such a, uh, you know, fascinating story of the origin of 
our fabrics. And this is a you know popular tale from the Northeast, uh, you know, and reading it in English, I've read it in English and I've read it in Hindi. Mm, you know, there's a certain musicality to the way Hamreel Mai's loom goes tuck, tuck, sim. It is simply a fascinating book and so gorgeously illustrated. You can see rich, uh, you know, vibrant illustrations that make this uh, story of Hamreel Mai and how the first fabric came into being. You see, that's just the, uh, you know, the, the, the wonder of uh, India, every, uh, you know, uh, state, every artistic tradition will have a fabric origin story. And this one from the Northeast is such a beautiful tale of how fabric came into being. Uh, Joanne, you say this is gorgeous, such a lovely creation story. Indeed, I'm, you know, it, it's such a pity that they don't have it available in English at the moment. But for those of you who can read in Kannada or Hindi, we have it available in both those languages. Hamreel Mai's Loom, a creation story of fabric, beautifully and gorgeously illustrated, you know, reflecting all the colors that go into making our handicraft traditions so colorful. So that was Hamreel Mai's Loom, published by Tulika. We'd recommend it for five plus year olds and it's priced at 135 rupees. Um, the next book that we have up is, uh, so the, uh, you know, is a, you know, fabulous hardbound book from uh, Karadi Tales called The Clever Tailor. Now, this one is, is a, is a, such a, you know, heartwarming story in every way. It's the story of Rupa Ram, who's a very famous but poor tailor. And he has one unfulfilled dream. What is that? What is that dream? It is a dream to stitch something for his own family. Now, what happens, uh, you know, when Rupa Ram uh, wants to do this, uh, you know, for uh, stitch something for his own family? The thing is, it begins with you know, you can see the gorgeous illustrations by Nayantara Surendranath. The story is written by Sri Vidya Venkat. And, uh, you know, it is, of course, this is a, it is a very famous European folk tale, but it has been adapted so well in the Indian context. Now, everybody says, I've got this perfect fitting Sherwani. Somebody says this Lehenga Choli is gorgeous. And everybody says, well, that's got to be Rupa Rams because he has magic in his fingers. Now, Rupa Ram is delighted about all these compliments, but he's also feeling a bit blue because he can't seem to be able to stitch anything wonderful for his own family. Rupa Baliga, you say Rupa Ram is a favorite character. We love the story indeed. Then what happens is that when he goes to a wedding, Preeti Ramchandran, it's a beautiful story enhanced by the super illustrations, the clever tailor, absolutely. When he goes to a, to a wedding, he gets, he wears his old turban. Simrita Tattar, you say the clever tailor, heart, heart, most definitely we heart this book. So he has to wear his old turban and he's a bit dejected about wearing an old turban. However, when he goes to the wedding, he is gifted a brand new Safa. Uh, good morning, Auntie Amritayu here. You say, good morning, Amritayu. Delighted to see you here and to see your mother, Moon Moon Mitra Das. We are absolutely thrilled when, uh, you know, children join us at our bazaars. So he, of course, to come back to the story, has a Safa, gets a brand new Safa, which is a turban. And he, uh, you know, decides to, you know, he loves it so much. He wears it here, there, everywhere. Then when the Safa becomes a little old, he finds that there is some fabric in it and he wants to discard it. But he says there's some fabric in it, which is not looking so old. Maybe I can make an old knee for my wife. 
And from there on, the story of this beautiful fabric, what happens from whether his wife and his daughter and his son and his other family members, such a fabulous story, The Clever Tailor, written by Sri Vidya Venkat, illustrated by Nayantara Surendranath. And of course, the book has been awarded many times. It's the winner of the Pika Book Children's Choice Award 2018. It was the winner of the Squid Week Crystal Kite Award for the Middle East, India and Asia region 2019. And it was shortlisted for the Neve Children's Book Award 2019. 19. It's a it's a really a visual treat and you know a story of how fabric can be used and reused over and over again. It's like I said, this is a handsome hardback edition. This one is priced at 399 rupees and available at special discounted prices at our fab. Fabric Bazaar. Arpita Thyagi, you say you are a storyteller. Well, there's so many books. What can you do but tell stories, right? Thank you so much. So the next book that I'm going to focus on is, you know, what I said, one of those books that has been stitched. I mean, we have books that tell stories of fabrics. We have books where characters want to wear different kinds of fabrics. But we also have books that have been embroidered and, uh, you know, stitched together. And this beautiful one is, excuse me, is this India. Such a lovely book by Anita Lutweiler and uh, Anushka Ravishankar. Now, the fabulous thing about this book, and of course, this book is not about clothes or about fabrics, but it has literally been fabricated. The thing is, it's the story of, um, I mean, we don't know who the narrator of the book is, but we know it's a child. The child's aunt Anna comes back from India with stories of places that she had seen. And to warm the child through the winter, she sewed a she sews a quilt for him with pictures of all the things that she has seen. Now, what does the child do? One day, the child, you know, uh, goes to bed, goes to sleep under the quilt, closes his eyes uh, or her eyes and is in for a big surprise. Just the kind of surprise that makes sweet dreams. Now, the thing is, uh, you know, that uh, Anita Lutweiler, actually, who's uh, one of the creators of the book, is a Swiss textile uh, artist. And what she does is to fabricate, uh, you know, is to uh, sort of literally stitch these stories. I mean, stitch these illustrations for different stories. And it's, you know, she's been practicing her art for over 30 years. And the fascinating thing about this book, especially about this one, is that this, the fabrics that are used in these illustrations, she has collected every bit of them from her trip to India, from her travels to India. I mean, how gorgeous is that? really. It's such a visual treat. I'm sure my holding it up like this doesn't do justice. You have to have it in your hands and, uh, you know, enjoy and experience the beauty of these fabulous stitches. Mm, and, you know, a sort of applique kind of work that is done, patchwork art to illustrate everything in the story. I found one, uh, you know, so when the when the young protagonist of the book sleeps under the quilt, uh, you know, then she is transported to a land that she doesn't know, you know, what that land is, basically, because the quilt has cows and auto rickshaws and, you know, people and buildings. And, you know, when she kind of lands in, when she arrives, let's say, in one place where there's another human being, uh, you know, she asks her and she says, I saw a girl outside her house. I thought we could be friends. Where am I? I asked her. She replied, that depends. That is so India. You know, I would just instantly, you know, jump to the conclusion that we are absolutely in India. And look at the... Uh, you know, the beauty of this fantasy. She drew a map without a place and said, let me explain the case. If you were standing on your head, I'd say you're on your hair. But since you're standing on your feet, 
you could just be anywhere. What fabulous fantasy adventure. And look at these gorgeous embroidered and, uh, you know, patchwork art that accompanies this beautiful book published by Tara, uh, you know, written by, uh, uh, co-created by Anita Lutweiler and Anushka Ravishankar. Anushka Ravishankar, everybody knows, is a master of verse, uh, you know, and this one priced at 200 rupees, available at, uh, you know, wonderful prices at our Fab Fabrics Bazaar. I'm going to move on to, uh, you know, my next book, which has come fairly recently on our shelves, not, uh, you know, uh, when I say fairly recently, not in the last couple of months, but this is a new offering from Tulika, fairly recent offering from Tulika, a sari for Ammi, written by Mamta Naini and illustrated by Sandhya Prabhat. What a beautiful tale this is. What a beautiful uh, picture book this is. It is the story of, uh, you know, Ammi. The protagonist is just an eye in the book and the protagonist and her sister, Sadaf, her, we know the name of the sister, but we don't know the name of the protagonist. Uh, you know, they see their dad dying threads of different kinds every day and they see their Ammi weaving the most gorgeous saris on a loom every day and you can see that beautiful cover where the protagonist is looking at her mother weaving saris on a loom. Now the thing is Mummy's Ammi saris are beautiful and different people clamor for Ammi saris but Ammi I'm afraid is not able to wear even one of the saris that uh, you know, she weaves. So, of course, you know, little girls being little girls, what do they decide to do? And you can see Sandhya Prabhat's rich, vivid illustrations really complement the story so beautifully, uh, you know. Uh, so little, the two little girls, you know, in fact, suggest to the mummy saying that, why don't you, uh, you know, wear one of the saris that you are weaving? And there's just, you know, mummy frowns uh, back at them. Ami frowns back at them and says, how on earth are we going to eat if I keep the saris that I weave? I mean, like I said, clothes, you know, immediately conversations can be started around so many things, the places that they come from, the people who make them, the people who wear them. I mean, you know, there are socio-political stories in every piece of fabric, uh, you know, that gets produced in our country. And I think as adults who are introducing these, uh, you know, books to children, you must make them aware of these contexts because the richness of our stories comes only when they are situated in these contexts. You can see, of course, Mami's, uh, Ami Sari's such beautiful, uh, you know, uh, things that she weaves and such beautiful stories that can be told on, in the saris. So what do the two little girls do? They decide that they will break their piggy bank, take out all the money that they have saved and try and buy a sari for their ammi. Try and ensure that their ammi can wear one of the saris that she weaves. It's a delightful uh, tale. It is so rich in life, in relationships. Like I said, you know, these stories, uh, Preeti Ramchandran, you say truly moving stories, teaches our kids many values, saving money, caring for your mom, perseverance, coming up with creative ideas to achieve what you embark on. We love it absolutely. And the fact that this story is set in a little village uh, in Kota, Rajasthan, which means the sari weaving traditions are absolutely from Kota, Rajasthan. The colors and you know what uh, you know what is showcased by way of the illustrations are indeed uh, you know the uh, you know uh, weaving traditions from kota in rajasthan what happens do the two little girls hi uh, sunila kulkarni gupta welcome to our fab fabrics bazaar so excited about this indian weaves and textile session we are equally excited about it and since you just came in i do want to say we have books on our traditions uh, you know weaving traditions and artistic traditions. We also have books uh, where the children want to wear particular kinds of clothes. And, you know, we have books that are actually stitched or woven together. The illustrations have been woven to put the books together. So different kinds 
different ways in which we have inter interpreted fabrics for this bazaar. But this one, a sari for Ammi, a must read for children, five plus year olds, Joanne Saldana. Plus, I love the little bit of history about the we weavers being from Mysore originally. Absolutely. In fact, uh, you know, it's such a good point that you raised Joanne Saldana in the story. Mummy, uh, you know, uh, love this one, Arpita Tyagi. Well worth loving, really. <coughs> Ami tells the kids how, uh, you know, uh, the, the co this tradition of weaving came from Mysore and that, you know, the, they were called away to Kota because the king asked for the weavers to travel to, uh, you know, to Rajasthan and weave for him, which tells you that, you know, so many artistic traditions survived because of the patronage of various, uh, you know, thoughtful rulers, basically. This one priced at 175 rupees and we'd recommend it for five plus year olds. We have a similar book, um, you know, um, which comes uh, to us from the Siddhis of Karnataka. This one is called Amu's Kavandi. It's such a lovely book put together by Shrujana Niranjani Sridhar, who has, uh, you know, both uh, written and illustrated the book. And this one that is published by Katha Publishers is this lovely story of a little Siddhi girl. The Siddhis are, you know, uh, the Afro-Asian people that live in a particular part of Karnataka and you know we don't know how their features are sort of you know how they have uh, I guess we can we can predict that you know people as much as stories as much as, as much as fabrics travel all over the world and there's a great intermingling of cultures so to speak now Amu, Amu's Kavandi is set in the Siddhi community in uh, you know Karnataka now the Kavandi is a quilt that Amu weaves. I mean, you know, the whole community weaves these beautiful quilts. And what are the stories that go into Amu's own Kavandi? It's a, you know, as is the story of many communities who are not part of the mainstream, there is a bit there is, you know, uh, there is a hint of sadness, but there is also the positivity and the power of art to uplift everything, you know, to brighten up your life, to cheer up your life and to give you hope to go forward. This beautiful book, uh, you know, brought out by Katha, like I said, it's a happy, sad story. And it's beautiful to see how the quilt is put together and, you know, really made us want to, uh, you know, visit the Kavandis and, I mean, you know, the uh, the Siddhis, I'm sorry, and find out exactly, you know, how they patched this beautiful, these beautiful Kavandis together. And, uh, you know, a, a really a, a story that, uh, you know, talks about, as I said, again, set in a beautiful socio-political context. It is for the youngest of readers, believe me. And we know lots of young kids love their quilts, right? They, they want the same blanket to use every day. And Amu is exactly like that, uh, you know. Uh, but the quilt tells us happy, sad stories of, uh, you know, her life, but eventually all about how art can transcend all of these things. A gorgeous book published by, uh, you know, Katha Amus Kavandi, priced at 120 rupees and available at Funky Rainbow's Fab Fabrics Bazaar. My next uh, recommendation is a set of two, uh, you know, season books from Pratham. Actually, this is called the Ritu Chakra series. And I'm afraid there are, you know, there are five books in the series, but Pratham doesn't have all of them in print at the moment. We have picked these two stories because they focus on spring, which is everything looks new. And, uh, you know, uh, they. Uh, the other one focuses, uh, hot tea and warm rugs focuses on winter. They are written charmingly by Mala Kumar and Manisha Chaudhary and illustrated by the one and only Priya Kurian who can bring a story alive by the magic of her illustrations. Now, why, uh, you know, um, why have we picked 
these particular ones uh, from Pratham, because in this story, hot tea and warm rugs, which is, uh, you know, so ideal for the upcoming winter season, you know, the girl, uh, the protagonist of the story says, we've taken out our winter uniforms for school. It's not so cold yet. Winter is called the Shishira Ritu in Sanskrit. And I love to eat hot things in this season. So, of course, you know, there's the great Kadlekai Parishay that happens in Bangalore, which is a groundnut fair that happens, you know, on a famous road in Bangalore where there's a temple called the Bull Temple. And this Kadlekai Parishay is like a big mela that happens in Bangalore every year so you get ground nuts of different kinds but you also get you know all kinds of eats and treats at this Kadlekai Parishe. Now the thing is the protagonist of the story wears her blue sweater and goes to the Kadlekai Parishe. and at the Parishe, she sees some warm shawls that she wants to buy for her grandmother. You can see her I'm sorry you can see her looking at these beautiful shawls that are up for sale at the Parishe. And from there on, the conversation veers off to what other people wear. You know, she thinks of another friend. She wants to pick up something for a friend. And that friend lives in a very, very cold Shimla. So there's a lot of clothes in this story. You know, there's, uh, you know, there, there's mufflers and there's mittens and there's gloves and, you know, uh, the Ritu Chakra series is wonderful. Yes, Rupa Baliga, it is wonderful. And for those of you who can pick these books up, you should do it. But perhaps you can not, but you can definitely read the, uh, you know, the rest of the books in the series on Pratham's uh, Story Weaver uh, website. So this one featuring, uh, uh, you know, lots of woolens and, uh, you know, lots of clothes. Ditto with everything looks new. In fact, it is... Uh, you know, set as, uh, you know, uh, when it's Vasant Ritu, which is spring, and it starts off with uh, this girl's Amma, who's celebrating Baisakhi by wearing a color called Basanti. You can see this beautiful, uh, you know, sari with various motives that the Amma wears to celebrate Baisakhi and, you know, this, this pretty sari, which the girl seems to love. So clothes, so connected to the seasons in India, right? So connected to festivals in India as well. I mean, the way our fabrics, uh, you know, are woven, the way, uh, you know, uh, when they, uh, you know, they are meant for the local climatic conditions and they reflect local artistic traditions so fabulously well. So these two books from the Ritu Chakra series that, uh, you know, uh, we recommend because there are some clothes that feature in them. My next book, uh, you know, uh, my next recommendation for you is a beautiful little book from um, uh, NBT called My Umma's Sari or My Amma's Sari, as you would like to say it, written by Geeta Dharmarajan and illustrated by an illustrator whose illustrations we have read growing up, so the Sattva Basu. The thing is, he's the art director for this a uh, book that NBT has put together because each of the uh, you know illustrations have been done by some Korean school children. The thing is, the project, it was a project, I think, that the author Geeta Dharmarajan conducted at some point with children from a Korean school, and they worked on the illustrations which Sudha Sattva Basu art directed to make this you know, to make this lovely book called My Amma Sari. Now, the thing is, you know, it's it's lovely. So this the illustrations have been made by Korean kids. And this, the protagonist too says, Amma always steps into her new dresses, much like I step into a dream. And as you can see, there's this lovely illustration of the Amma stepping, Umma, you know, stepping into a sari. Now, the, in the next very next page, she says, today she and I go shopping and she buys herself a sari from India. I think, you know, uh, the, the, sto the story has been put together so beautifully using these children's illustrations, which should give all us adults such a lovely idea of what we can do with 
books how you know how can we encourage our children to do you know these creative things as well it's so easy to come up with a story sitting anywhere you don't need anything you just need your imagination you need the ability to be you need to you know spark off that creativity creativity in kids and they absolutely will come up with the most delightful tales now they go shopping you know uh, and buy a sari and then of course the amma says how do i look and looks at herself in the mirror and of course you know uh, and then amma suddenly disappears into this mirror and what happens the girl is scrambling to so that her amma doesn't go away and what does she do she holds on to the pallu of the sari and there are all kinds of adventures that follow subsequently so beautiful i mean how many of us remember our amma's pallus i don't know how many books i've written for adults uh, i mean i've read for adults that Uh, you know we'll have the protagonist when there's some unexpected or unwanted guest coming into the house simply just hiding behind amma's pallu basically right so uh, from for this girl you know her clinging on to amma's pallu you know is the adventure of a lifetime this one like i said put together uh, you know published by nbt and priced at uh, 105 rupees written by geeta dharmarajan who's herself the founder of katha publishing and uh, you know art directed by sudha satwa basu i'm going to uh, before i say a bunch of highs and hellos uh, i will just uh, you know introduce one book that we think uh, you know is so beautifully put together this one is palan quin bearers this is one of those books that comes into the category of uh, you know books that have been stitched literally together the illustrations uh, you know in this book by indu harikumar are absolutely have been woven with such care and with such beauty really you should take a look at the pages to uh, you know i'm sure no computer can do justice to the gorgeousness of these illustrations uh, it would be lovely if you had the book to you know look at yourself now this is of course the story i mean the poem uh, by the nightingale of india sarojini naidu it's about a bride being carried on a palanquin so you know and these famous starting lines lightly o oh, lightly we bear her along which is the palanquin bearers bearing the bride along and then into the next page where she sways like a flower in the wind of our song just look at these beautiful illustrations just look at this uh, the way indu harikumar has literally stitched this together in fact what we love about indu's work and uh, you know she says i remember uh, you know in once in conversation uh, while having a chat with her when she was at our office she says she's a great fabric fiend so which means she's picking and collecting bits and pieces of fabric you know every single time and just see how well that creativity uh, you know those fabrics have come into use to illustrate a very well known poem by the nightingale of india sarojini naidu it's a gorgeous book it's a great way to introduce a poem and often it's very challenging to introduce poetry to children um, you know simply because i think we absolutely you know don't infuse it with the life and joy that it's supposed have this do it published by katha and priced at 195 rupees the poem palankun bearers uh, you know illustrated with fabric it's a beautiful book and uh, you know it should be read far and wide a must on every school library's uh, uh, collection certainly i'm going to uh, you know say a quick round of hellos to everybody hi dinesh nambiar joan saldana gp singh divya menon rupa baliga david williams lovely to see you mum geeta mani terrific that you were able to join us apurva b ashok welcome to the bazaar and apurva i you know love these chit chats often you know just before the bazaar i have to say 
that this community of book lovers that we've you know that that are out there we are so happy for these connections because you are you know um you are like literally the wind beneath our wings i know you know apurva one time messaged us when we were doing the translation bazaar saying you know we had used the Uh, the uh, alphabet r for in in different languages on the on our poster but in kannada we had put the alphabet r the big r and she said i was just wondering whether it's deliberate or not or whether you mistook this r the kannada small r for the kannada big r and we were you know we are so happy that these details get noticed and they make a difference because a lot of work goes into getting these bazaars together for you and we love it that you recommend your favorite reads when you see the theme of our bazaar you uh, you know write in with suggestions and please do continue to do that for us because it absolutely makes a big difference to us and we're you know always looking for those suggestions and always welcoming of those suggestions Subha Rao Silam Nandini Nair Seema Karant what a pleasure yes not in a sari this morning that was the wonderful storyteller who asked if uh, you know uh, we were going to be in saris soon Seema very soon you'll be telling a story and we'll be in the saris certainly but thank you so much for joining us at the bazaar Archana Natraj absolutely a pleasure Nidhi Agarwal Anu Gumaraju a big big thank you going out to you for for helping us uh, you know uh, connect with the guest of our bazaar i mean it's it's lovely that you helped connect us with bipra mudaya of vimore and we are eagerly waiting for her to join us in the next 10 minutes uh, so a big hello and a hug going out to you anu gumaraju who's uh, you know a really good friend and wears the sari so effortlessly that she's the envy of all of us friends for just how beautifully and gorgeously she wears it joan saldana what a tremendous job you are all doing a big fan of these was bazaars a big hug going out to you joan saldana really you know uh, it, it matters so much we really miss you when you're not there arpita tyagi so lovely that you've managed to join us this morning preeti ramchandran an absolute pleasure it's so delightful that across these months how many of you have read books that we have recommended and keep writing back to us keep talking about these books when we're doing our bazaars this is the mission and vision of funky rainbow this constitutes the fabric of our being this is what we want you all to do to appreciate these books to love them and to take them to children here there everywhere moon moon mitra das delighted like a new friend you know made from far away in calcutta but been with us right through with her lovely children especially amrita ayu who is watching us this morning as our avyukt and ameya nair who are um, divya menon's children anu gumraju you say it's my pleasure what a thank you so much for doing what you uh, you know do for us parveen sheik vimor sari is hurre we are so delighted to see you here this morning we're just waiting to welcome bipra in after we say a big round of hellos to all our friends old and new at the bazaar sanjana bedi mutamaz niece so lovely that family is supportive of everything we do bhavana kitur what a pleasure shrish namita patil no breeder our uh, instagram handles absolutely always amaze me i'm so delighted that so many of you join us on instagram as well tiny feet we love the work that you do bukuru lit fest big big salam to you uh, you know uh, greetings for the season and i really hope between now and january uh, 2021 when there's so many festivals that we celebrate and so many different uh, you know uh, traditions we hope there is a huge bounty of books at your end as well thank you so much for joining us bukuru lit fest we love the work that uh, swati and venki you do to reach the love of children's books here there everywhere arpita tyagi you say you make me fall in love with books again and again that's the idea my dear we absolutely want everybody to be in love with indian children's book Mm, Ankita, uh, you say you're enjoying the session, and it's indeed very tempting. You're a school. 
absolutely please get tempted by every single book that we recommend today and ensure that they are on your shelves you have no idea how you know how much delight your children will get from many many of these books Mm, Kata Kutuhala, lovely to see you here this morning. We do know that you know you're, you've supported us in several ways. Saumya, Article Design Studio, Super Street Lawyer, wow, Super Street Lawyer, we love the name. Artsy Crafts, what a pleasure you've joined us at this bazaar. Simrita Takhtar, what a pleasure it has been to discuss books with you. And we really hope, you know, many of these recommendations will you know, go into projects that you're working in. I'm very, very happy that, uh, you know, there are ways in which books are reaching children from different strata because our books are meant for everyone. We've got books in all price ranges. The cheapest of books begins at 20 rupees and we have books as expensive as 2000 rupees. And Samrita Takhtar and Anu Gumaraju, the team at Tide, we are so delighted that we're collaborating to literally reach these books here, there, everywhere. Abdullah Khan, what a pleasure. Jyoti Rao from Australia, Mutama's classmate. Nothing quite like the support of friends to keep us going in these challenging times. Deeksha Rastogi, a big hello to you. Mumbai's mom, the foodie wanderer. I hope you're wandering for food and fabric. Uh, Shahana, Shahana Hana. Wow. <laughs> I love that name basically, right? Or Shahana Hana. Sorry, I got the name wrong, but I love the musicality of that uh, name. Nikki Girl, Moose Tankachan, and Arzu Case. Maud Stangachan and Arzu K. Sen. I can't tell you how delighted I am you are here, Arzu K. Sen. We've seen you from the time that you were a little child and to a young lady here to watching us at our Fab Fabric Bazaar. What a pleasure it is, Arzu K. Sen, that you've joined us this morning. Sunila Kulkarni Gupte, a big hug going out to you. And Vasanta Kalbagal, who indeed bought pieces of fabric designed as Mar asks for us when she first visited us at the Funky Rainbow office. What a pleasure that you have all joined us here this morning. I'm going to absolutely welcome our guest for the day, Vipra Mudaya. Sorry, sorry, one name that we, uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, welcome uh, our guest for the day, Vipra Mudaya of Vimore. Vimor is an institution in Bangalore. Good morning, Vipra. Thank you so much for joining us. We Thank are, you are our perfect guest. You are in a beautiful sari. <laughs> and, you know, it is such a pleasure that you have joined us at our Fab Fabric Bazaar this morning. For our viewers, Vipra is, uh, you know, an entrepreneur and part of this institution in Bangalore called Vimore. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful sari store, but to say it's just a store is doesn't you know, encompass the breadth of fantastic work that they do in preserving our artistic traditions and conserving our artistic tra traditions and taking these stories to people here, there, everywhere. Much like we do with our books, they do with, our, with their saris. And Vipra, who's the third generation of, this, of the family that has been running Vimore, and Vimore, I know, was set up you know, way back in the 1970s, is here to talk about the Vimore story. There's lots of exciting, exciting things that they, they've done. And in the whole, in the course of our conversation, we hope you will uncover these fabulous stories that she has to, uh, you know, little, little, you know, beautiful little things that are you know, tucked away into the warp and weft of every sari. I think Vipra will unfurl some of them for us today. <laughs> Thank you, Vipra, so much for joining us. Thank you, Vidya. Thanks so much to you and the team. And thank you for having me. 
mean that introduction was amazing but thanks <laughs> <laughs> it is it is the work that you do that is amazing literally vipra and you know we want you to tell our audience as i said you know we our audience is uh, you know filled with book lovers and book lovers are always interested in multiple things right so tell us tell us a bit about vimor tell us a bit i'm sorry before i ask you to talk about vimor my partner at funky rainbow mutama and i was telling you about her yesterday yeah. wants us to uh, tell to wish you happy kaveri sankramane like right and yeah, she said all happy sankramana too <laughs> which is the day you know a special day for the birth of the kaveri river basically and she said as a fellow person from kur you would be happy for those greetings we all thank are you, thank so, you so much <laughs> tell us tell us about the vimor uh, story and you know uh, how you how it all began so uh we more like everyone likes to think must have been would have been like out of this need to conserve textiles and things like that we <laughs> more started in 1974 by my grandmother chimmy my mother pavitra out of a bedroom in my grandmother's house it was born out of necessity my grandfather had passed away and um they had to make a living and my grandmom was the first manager for kaveri handicrafts in right. the late 50s and then she worked with mrs jaika at the world's fair in the 60s so in new york and in montreal and things like that so she had this in depth knowledge of uh, sarees textiles arts crafts that was there and she was already selling sarees out of a trunk like she says uh, like she used to say in out of her home and this was i mean like they said this was the only thing they knew so the remor came from there that was where we started um they started with selling old temple sarees now temple sarees are not sarees with temple borders like a lot of people think they are but were sarees that people gave or made as offerings to the deity at any temple so it didn't matter where you came from it could be an elaborate uh, heavy silk saree or it could be a cotton it depended on what you want to give and um, i think when the numbers of these sarees accumulated in the uh temples they used to sell them off in temple auctions um okay so so if you look at really old textiles that were temple sarees you'll find a little name embroidered at the edge of the pallu which is probably uh, in in tamil sometimes in telugu sometimes in other languages but sometimes you can't make out what it is but it's probably what we feel the name of the person who donated that saree oh, okay um and um, again there was a little story with this gentleman who landed up a uh, gentleman called mr bandari who landed up at my grandmom's place and said i know you're selling sarees i've got these old sarees will you come with me so even to date we don't know what it was that made her trust this gentleman who came in an auto rickshaw she promptly got into that rickshaw with him and off they went to the city where he had his house and you know he had bought these sarees off so you could only buy them by bundles so they could oh. buy them an entire bundle so you didn't know if it was resaleable or not so all of those beauties that were there and uh, so what could be sold as is they would sell as is and what needed to be um you know rectified or dyed or printed on and things like that that's what my mom ended up doing so she says now you look at that at that time it felt like you were recycling something now it seems like it's designer wear because people are now printing and embroidering and putting together piecing borders and things together so um that's how vimo started and when those sarees started dwindling in numbers you didn't find things like that and that was our aesthetic sense the classics that were there we started recreating them with weavers we knew oh, never oh, thinking oh, we were doing something called revival or um, you know any of that it was just that it appealed to us and it was something that we wanted to do um and then yeah then there were i mean my mom did study textiles for a bit with the weaver service center and the technicalities and things that were there to simplify designs also for weavers was something she did a lot of and then there were the stories that came so naming each sari or whether there was a design story to it or sarees have a lot of stories to tell like we always say it doesn't <laughs> yes, just uh, tell you about where it was from or what it is it also has a human story to it it has that weaver story in it it has a lot of stuff that is in that one sari So yeah we've been doing design documentation and recreating pieces from our old collection 
And uh, what's been nice is since people know that we've been doing this, a lot of people have been bringing back their old textiles for us to look at. So that's been fascinating um, because there's so much to see, you know, either it's because uh, we always say there's no other garment or, um, out, you know, garment that you wear that has such a lot of sentiment attached to it, like a sari does. Right. So there are two reasons we recreate saris. One is the human story or one is the design story. So those are the only two reasons. <laughs> Lovely. It's just lovely. You know, in fact, you know, Vimor, your your grandmother and mother are just, you know, legendary when it comes to, uh, you know, saris. And, uh, you know, I, I know many people, I mean, when I was in college in Bangalore, you know, friends would talk about going to Vimor to, you know, have to buy saris for festivals or for weddings. Or it it was a it was a name, you know, to reckon with. And I and you know, as you said, you, it was your grandmother Chimi Nanjappa and your mother Pavitra Mudaya who set up uh, Vimor way back in 1974. And you, uh, Vipra Mudaya, you are the third generation of the family that is working to. Yeah. Let's say, you know, to use this word, revive saris and document our artistic traditions. Were you always interested in this, even as a child? And I'm sure every adult in our audience is waiting for you to give us the answer. Because if you say yes, then they're going to instantly find out what your family was feeding you to <laughs> keep this interest, you know, to make, you know, pass on the interest to children. I think there was an interest right from the time I was a child. I think I grew up in that environment. I mean, that's and by the way, that that's, is you. That's, that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me amongst all the saris in the so-called sari room that was the store uh, earlier. So it was like I mentioned earlier, it was um, sari room and shop by day and guest room by night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we've never looked at us doing anything, you know, fabulous or things like that. There was a lot of you build relationships with people. But um, yeah, I think the interest was always there. And um, I think some, and it wasn't because it was told to me or I was uh, shown stuff or things. I think it's because of the exposure you got. It was never put down my throat and it was never um, for neither of us, neither me nor my brother. But I think like people say, when you grow up seeing things of beauty and things that are pretty and colors and motifs and things to you, I think it eventually stays with you. You um, somewhere pick it up. I have lots of anecdotes of doing some lots of nonsense in the stop shop when I was younger. But you, you should tell up. us. You should tell us about that anecdote of uh, handling a customer when you were as young as like eight, nine years old. Yeah. Please tell yeah. us. Please tell that yeah. one. So, so um, like I mentioned earlier, the sari room was next to my grandmom's bedroom. It, it had a connecting door. So when in the afternoon, when anyone had a nap. Uh, when my grandmom would nap and the staff would leave for lunch, I would open the connecting door because the main door was locked. The main sari room was locked. <clears throat> but go in there and I didn't have access to the silks because those were cupboards that were locked up. But here was this cupboard with a shutter that had cotton saris in it. So I could open it out and pull out every sari I wanted and drape it and feel all nice and look at it. Quietly fold it back, make sure that it was proper so they didn't know. <laughs> and then put it away so no one knew that I was they looking through all this. But yeah, when I was around nine or 10, um, there was a funeral that my mother and my grandmother had to go to. And they had left. And they'd left me with the maid at uh, my grandmom's house, which is where Vimor is. And the staff had left for lunch. Because we used to, clo we used to close for lunch break. And uh, the doorbell rang. And I peeked out through the window. And there was this lady who was there, who I knew was my grandmom's relative. Now, who she was exactly was not something I knew. I knew she was my grandmom's cousin. So I let her in. She said she wanted to buy a sari. It was for a temple that she had to give. And it was for a for the day which I wanted for and all that. And I very confidently, instead of telling her, wait for the staff to come back, opened the shop, opened everything, <laughs> and let her in, pulled out these saris for her, let her make a choice out of it, and she made a choice. And uh, then I had to make a bill. And uh, so here I stood with this bill book very confidently writing it down. And uh, I saw her take, uh, you know, you hear your grandmother go on saying this, cash or check, because no credit card then, cash or check. And um, and because you heard it so long, I, I saw her take out the checkbook. I said, cash or check? And she said, check. And then quickly I replied saying, we don't accept outstation checks. <laughs> this line I heard my grandmother say all the time. And uh, here I rattled it off. And thankfully to my luck, 
Jerry, who was uh, working with us, came back and she quickly handled the rest of it. And she said, no, 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 if it's outstation, we'll take it. This was my grandmother's cousin, for God's sake. So, <laughs> uh, I remember my grandmother getting a call from this lady later in the evening saying, you've got a precocious granddaughter. What did she mean by telling me no outstation checks accepted? <laughs> So you literally, I mean, you know, I, I loved and as part of our conversations when, you know, Vipra said, you know, as easily as we can open and close books, she can fold saris and put them away, <laughs> you know, back on the shelves where people don't quite, uh, you know, know that they have been taken out. But evidently, uh, you know, uh, you grew up in the midst of all these influences. So did your brother and uh I, you know, I mean, I, I, I know you said that it was not something that you sort of came to just na naturally, but eventually grew into it. You did come back to Vimor after going away to do a BCom, basically, yeah. right? That's what you mentioned, right? You went off to study your BCom yeah. because you wanted to be as far away from all of this. But eventually, those weaves, they just brought you back, I think, really, oh, right? I think so too. Yeah. <laughs> So, so of course, this the, the question that everybody's probably waiting to, you know, get your response on that exciting project to create, to recreate Mrs. Uh, Indira Gandhi's saris, right? How did that happen? And really, I think irrespective of whether all of us agree with her political style or not, we do know and we are in awe of her sartorial style, really, the ease with which she wore saris at all these international gatherings, carrying them off with such confidence. Tell us a bit about that project. Tell us also about how Mrs. Gandhi had your saris, uh, you know, and that picture is of Mrs. Gandhi wearing a Vimor sari, isn't it? Yeah, that's the puja sari that became famous, I think, because she was, I mean, everywhere you find her, you find her in that sari. Uh, I think when she was, also when her cremation, the cottage left her house, I think the sari was draped over her. Uh, so I think it's somewhere in people's memories. Um, so yeah, um, like I mentioned, my grandma worked with Mrs. Jaika. Uh, and Mrs. Jaika was her boss uh, in the 60s. And uh, when we started Vimor, we got a lot of support from her and uh, Kamla Devi. They would tell people what we were doing and, you know, spread the word around. And since Mrs. Jaika was such a good friend of uh, Mrs. Gandhi's, a lot of her saris she bought from us. A lot of them. I mean, my mom remembers bundles of a bundle of saris going to the Raj Bhavan for her to choose. We never met her. She never came personally to Vimor. Okay. But uh, it was through Mrs. Jaika. There was a, like... My mom even remembers, like she says, I know what went and I know what else she got. So, you know, it's in memory saying what those sarees were. Um, so this project happened about four, three, four years ago, three years ago, I think. It was her um, birth centenary celebrations. Okay. And uh, totally agree with you with saying we don't necessarily have to agree with the politics of it and what her policies were and things like that. But uh, there is no denying that here was this woman who was all-powerful in a handloom sari taking on the world. And uh, what I always like to say is if when you look at any pictures of her or any footage, you see her in saris that all of us could wear. They want these saris that none of us could afford. I mean, though she did own those and have some beautiful saris, what she wore were things that all of us could wear and identify with and probably own. So there was a great identity and I think she did tremendous amount for handicraft and handloom. She really promoted it and even with the things, you know, letting people do stuff and work with the government uh, emporiums and things like that and all of it was great with what she did with handlooms. Um, so, I think it's again the politics of it. Um, BJP is in power so they didn't want to really make a hoo-ha about celebrating her oh, and okay. uh, yeah, about the centenary uh, year, is it? Yeah, centenary year, they didn't want to do that. Okay. So there were lots of people that were doing events uh, during that time. There was a dance festival happening in Delhi. There was uh, drama. There were lots of things happening to celebrate her birth centenary. And uh, we a year earlier, through a friend of the family uh, who was trying to curate this, um, Malvika Singh, who put it together, uh, she got in touch with us through Prasad Vidapa. And uh, they knew Mr. that Prasad Vidappa basically. Yeah, Prasad. Okay. Huh. And a mm. lot of her saris they knew were from us. So mom gets a call saying, You have to come to Delhi. We're asking you to come. So she went. It was a day trip. She went. They went to Malvika's house. 
and they took out about 14 sarees that belonged to Mrs. Gandhi. So no, oh. we didn't have a choice in um, what was or things like that. But these were choice of sarees that the family had sent that they wanted to recreate. And we had to create a total of 100 pieces across these 14 designs uh, oh. for the centenary. Now, uh, what really excited mom, and I think it was a great sense of fright for her, was that uh, when they took out the 14, about six or I think eight were from us, the oh. cottons and things. Yeah, so it was amazing that, you know, like out of all these sarees that came, um, a lot were from us. And so she, they were only, she was only given the opportunity to take pictures and uh, touch them and feel them and see them and all of it. And uh, they said, recreate. So all we could recreate was from photographs and mum's memory of the texture. Oh. There was no going back and re revisiting the sari. It was just that day. And uh, there were saris, there were banarasis in it. There was a tanchoi, there were a couple of tanchois in it. Uh, there were other stuff. But the creative freedom to recreate that was ours. Uh, because a lot of it couldn't have been recreated exactly as it was. Because lots of skills have changed. You know, also, we don't have access to a lot of areas where a lot of them came from. Like if it was Orissa and Tassar and stuff, we didn't have. Okay. So we had a lot of fun with it. I think mom did. We changed some things. You know, some sari had only gold buttas. We did gold and silver. We added a pallu. Like the one in the picture, we feel was just yardage. There was oh. no pallu on the sari. Uh, so we added a pallu. We changed the buttas. There was another one which had a textured sort of a pallu. And... Uh, to bring that texture, we added wool into the Ooh. weft uh, to kind of keep it. So lots of things. And then they had this show in uh, Bikaner House in Delhi. Oh, and yeah, that's where we met the family later. But uh, yeah. And I think we got the nicest compliment was, I think Priyanka said that we'd done justice to her grandmother's son. I mean, that was more than enough. I mean, nothing else really. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. How fascinating. And, you know, you had an, uh, you know, exhibition at BIC where at the Bangalore International Centre, uh, you know, where you uh, one, you know, showcased uh, all the heritage of Vimor, but you also focused on the saris that of Mrs. Gandhi's that you yeah. had recreated and making them available, you know, as you say, for, uh, you know, that was that that's a photograph of the beautiful exhibition at BIC that, uh, you know, I absolutely had the pleasure of attending and where, uh, you know, had a chance to meet with Vipra. Uh, and those saris that Mrs. Gandhi's saris were available, as you say, in, you know, just in, uh, you know, price ranges that were not astronomical at all, like, you know, saris that people could wear every day. And I do remember picking up one for my mum and my aunt, uh, you know, uh, so they could kind of use it. It's just lovely, this, this uh, effort to, uh, you know, to recreate and uh, you know, uh, present to the world stories of, uh, you know, someone who we consider iconic, really. What, uh, you know, what a pleasure that must have been. And in fact, you know, while you were talking about this, we, we know that handlooms have so much woven into them, right? Whether it's history, art, craft, mythology, folklore, even personal stories, basically, right? And um, I, I'm sure, you know, a piece of handloom or a piece of handloom fabric is a great way for children and adults to discover stories about who they are, where they came from, you know, maybe the fascinating stories of a place that they visited. I know you're doing this session from the Vimore Museum of Living Textiles, and we can see there are some beautiful saris, uh, you know, in your backdrop, basically. But is this why you set up the Vimore Museum of uh, Living Textiles? So, um the museum is my mom's dream. How lovely. <laughs> uh, uh, so the Vimo Handloom Foundation is, I mean, the museum is part of the foundation. Okay. And the foundation was set up some years ago uh, with the focus of trying to create livelihood support schemes and help people, you know. Uh, we, we did weaving, uh, you know, we did livelihood support schemes and uh, programs for weavers across Karnataka with some tie-up with the government quite a few years ago. So these were even people who'd never woven before. And um, part of it eventually was mum's dream to put out a museum. And we call it the Living Textile, Museum of Living Textiles, because we we believe that it is living. It is now. It is here. It's not something that we, we don't want it to be like most of us assume or believe a museum was something in the past. Mm. Old, um, you know, or you go and look and appreciate and say, oh, that was beautiful. How lovely it was. There's never a lovely it is or can be or where it would go. 
and um, while like i said we sold those temple sarees uh, some of them were kept some which were saleable some that were interesting were kept and we ended up having a collection these a lot of the sarees that you see in the museum uh, are our personal collection so there are sarees that either i worn mom's worn my grandmother wore someone has worn over the years and um, they're old and some most of them about 100 years old and then wow. uh, sarees that belong to my great grandmother or someone else in the family and like i mentioned over the years people have been very kind uh, to kind of donate their sarees oh. you know uh, pieces that have fallen apart or not there but sentimental about but not um not something that they can pass uh, down to someone because probably there isn't someone or it's not wearable but they always felt that you know here we were that we could appreciate it and we could do something with it and out of these textiles come a lot of stories you know they just have the human side of it which is their story with that saree and then when you look at the design then there's other stuff that comes out so the museum of living textiles is primarily that it's mum's dream wanted to share it with everyone not want to keep it locked away because these are our sarees i mean at the end of the day this is something that we wore but um, how long can you go on holding it on to and saying mine mine and i look lovely in it and it's mine to wear <laughs> um, there are stories to it and it's not one of those museums where we tell you you know there is a there is a write up on every sari but it also tells you a little it's it's more in a lay person's point of view uh, it's also tells you the human story in that we are not going we're not trying to tell you which century bc and uh, who owned it <laughs> and what it's made of Mm -hmm. um so that's the museum and we have a loom we conduct uh, weaving classes we have uh, textiles from different places and we also have a section saying you know if there's information that you'd like to tell us on a particular weave we probably don't know about it we we don't know everything that there is so please you know help us learn a little more about those that we don't um so yeah this happened and then we turned 45 years and then the bic event happened <laughs> um but it, tra- it it's also to show you that how design has continuity and design has a life of its own uh, that it doesn't stagnate stagnate it doesn't die and uh, that it can continue she also primarily wanted the museum not to be a place only for an urban audience because you and i can afford to go to any museum around the world or anywhere and see beautiful things um it's also a space that she wanted for the weavers to come back uh, wow. a lot of them uh, because weavers don't keep pieces that they created there are memories of what they created their fathers created there are stories of what um you know my father told me this was done in our village or not some of them don't even remember things being there there were techniques mm-hmm. that they in their lifetimes haven't seen that have been lost but uh, we believe that if it's a place that they can come to and see what was created in their place and find Absolutely. inspiration in it and then say maybe i can do this there's nothing like it you can just take a bird and then from some other region that you see here that inspires you and create something completely different and it it creates pride in them that what was and it also creates some hope for us saying that you know maybe there could be some sort of inspiration right. uh, for them to create more so it's also a lot for them which is what she wants to space to yes. do because there's no design directory that they can go back to to kind of look at there's nothing there with them there are only tales or stories that are there that you can oh, sarees <laughs> actually right i mean it's such a lovely idea and we really you know we would like to tell our audience that you know if ever you visit bangalore when the world is uh, you know okay again and i really hope that it goes back there soon the vimor museum is a place to definitely stop by at and uh, look at their beautiful collection it tells you so many many stories and <clears throat> in line you know taking you to my next question would be that i mean all of most of us watching here today are adults adults who are interested in children's books so what do you think you know adults can do you know to get children interested in our own artistic traditions children of today you know how do we get them interested if they are not that is of course yeah um i don't know i think exposure mostly and um mainly that because i don't think it can be stuffed down your throat you can't yes, uh, be towards it but you can expose your children to things of beauty it could be just even admiring something in nature and saying look at the colors 
uh it could be as something as saying um you know even whether it's uh, there are lots of things you can do at home with your kids to kind of get that going but i think there are um lot, like i was telling you yesterday much before these do it yourself kits came you know we did it with our parents at home cut a vegetable block print tie and dye it with beetroot juice um make things out of cardboard boxes for all you need to absolutely but um, also show them things it's because textiles take a lot from nature so you are inspired by the colors in nature uh, nowhere like we always say will any weaver is refer to a color as a shade card or a number there is always <laughs> a reference to a bird a fruit a flower anything it could be right. something in nature where that color comes from and there is a name and every region has a name and every region has a different thing so whether it's measurements whether it's anything every region in india has its own um beauty i mean every forget state every district or every town you move from things change completely vastly and there's so much to see and learn but i think exposure you can't force someone there's enough to distract children they don't need to <laughs> and um i think just making you aware of the things that exist and i think if you grow up in a home where craft art and even textiles are a part of your growing up you learn to appreciate it right. um, if if the aesthetic and if the thing you've been exposed to has been of only uh, plastic and toys and uh, um, forgive me but lots of bling then that <laughs> is going to be your um, that is going to be your taste Right. you can develop it later it can change not that it isn't but uh, small things that just uh, you know you can do schools i find lot very often do a lot of stuff so they make children do block printing or whatever it is it's it's nice that way um also things with like hand loom is a little complex because unless you see it understanding mm -hmm. what the process is all about is extremely complicated That's and it's highly one would find it quite amazing the highly mathematical and the way it's done uh, for a person who apparently is not been given a formal education who can do this uh, <laughs> so i think exposure mainly vidya and doing things at home like uh, nothing more you know you can't uh, yeah and these even these um, bazaars that were there or you'd get dragged with your mother you would regretted you would complain the entire time going from stall to stall seeing the bangle maker and the puppet maker and someone else but somewhere it stays with you mm. um as much as we complained as kids and didn't want to go but it stays yeah absolutely so and of course these of lovely books which parents can easily you know lovely kind of books yeah <laughs> introduce to their children because so you know to... sorry go ahead no sorry go ahead yeah so much to learn from books i mean um, it lets your imagination go wild like i was saying yesterday children's <laughs> books especially um Absolutely. yeah the bird can be your bird the way you look at a bird not the way someone else not the way you would look at a bird my bird is different from your bird but that's just to the words <laughs> correct <laughs> that is such a lovely uh, you know yeah we really you know should expose our children to uh, the best things and as you say you know maybe they're reluctant maybe they're not but these influences well and truly run deep you know i mean uh, when when we were growing up you know bangle sellers and sari sellers would come home right they would bring all these things and uh, there would be like so much of you know fuss and sometimes you think like the adults have forgotten you and you know you're just doing your own yeah. thing but you know looking at those uh, clothes looking at those colors looking at those bangles i mean it's such a way to keep our interest alive as of course is the museum and i know when the world is normal again you know you do offer Uh, you know workshops for children yeah. at the museum storytelling sessions uh, you know for children at the museum which is possibly just the best way to keep this uh, you know tradition going thank you thank you vipra it was absolutely a pleasure to thank you, you know, have thank you, you with us. thank you for having me 
I mean, you know, I, I can't tell you, you know, I was that college girl who grew up thinking <laughs> about Vimore. So to be talking to somebody, uh, you know, uh, uh, from your family is, uh, you know, a matter of such uh, pleasure for us. And, uh, you know, this wonderful work that you're doing, uh, we really hope it goes on for forever and ever. Uh, you know, your, your the, the tradition that has been started by your grandmother and mother, we know it'll, it'll keep going. Thank you Thank so you. much. And uh, a big, uh, you know, to all our audience watching, the next time you're at Bangalore, stop by at Vimore, definitely, or at Funky Rainbow as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, you, can, you can use your bigger budgets for Vimore and your smaller <laughs> budgets for Funky Rainbow, or we'll do book and sari combinations. Book and sari combos, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> that you can, uh, but thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to have you uh, at thank our book bazaar this morning. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So that was Vipra Mudaya of Vimore. And I really, uh, you know, we mean it. You must stop by when you're there next. It's the, the, the variety, I mean, the sheer history of, uh, you know, textile and fabric to be able to see it at a museum is, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's just such an eye opener. And those colors, my God, really, the colors of all our fabrics and uh, the colors of all our textiles and our weaves. Anu Gumaraju, you say that was amazing, Vipra, so well articulated and a delight to hear the stories. Absolutely, it is. And we are so glad, Anu, that you helped us get, uh, you know, have Vim, uh, you know, Vipra join us at the show. Arpita Tyagi, you said sorry with a book. And that instantly takes us to uh, the, our next couple of recommendations. And we certainly have some more sari books and fabric books for you. Uh, the next one that I'm going to focus on is called The Mystery of Blue. And, you know, I have to give a shout out to Rupa Baliga, who reminded, uh, you know, me about it this morning. Uh, what a lovely book it is from uh, Tulika, written by Muriel, uh, Muriel Kakani and illustrated by uh, Bosky Jain. It's a must, must read book for, uh, you know, all of us, you know, especially if you want to follow what Vipra says of introducing children to dyes and colors and, you know, patterns and motifs like, you know, you make, uh, you know, you notice these things. And in fact, you know, yesterday when she was talking, she had, uh, you know, said a wonderful thing to us. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Mm where she said that, you know, often they put these motifs, these motifs of, let's say, elephants and horse and deer on saris because they wanted for the wearer to be imbibed with those qualities, the cleverness of an elephant, uh, you know, and uh, Rupa Baliga, you say, yeah, thank you. Of course, you know, this book had to be mentioned, no doubt about it. Mm, the cleverness of an e elephant, the grace of a deer, the beauty of a peacock, you know, I mean, they, they hoped that some of these qualities would get imbibed and the colors that, you know, are used in each district dependent on what is growing there, those dyes. And this beautiful book from Tulika, The Mystery of Blue, which is the story, which is the story of Ilkal, the fabric of uh, the Ilkal fabric that we all know. And we've seen many saris in that uh, fabric and even, uh, you know, salwar material. It's the story of a girl called Kunku and her uh, and her pigeon her pigeon is called chandrakali the pigeon that you see on the cover and what happens is that they go off on a journey to discover how dyes are created the story starts so fabulously actually in the sense that there is this uh, conversation about how people uh, you know, from so long ago, you know, how did they wear colored clothes? How were their pinks and oranges and blues and yellows? And from there on, going into the story of dyes and how dyes are created. It is such an excellent book to introduce, uh, you know, young readers to our, uh, you know, artistic traditions. And we know that India was a land of dyes. I mean, you know, various, uh, uh, you know, um, various people came to the country to trade in dyes, you know, whether it was the Portuguese, the, uh, you know, the French, the Dutch, the British, they all came to India, uh, you know, for their dyes. And this beautiful book, The Mystery of Blue, 
you know, is one such story to introduce our youngest readers to the story of dyes and how they are made. From there, of course, because we have been inspired by saris, we have to move to a book that many, many of you are very, very familiar with. I'm sure it's called My Mother's Sari, written by Sandhya Rao and illustrated by Nina Sabnani, both master, uh, you know, writers and illustrator, uh, you know, and who have been doing fantastic work for many decades. I just love the way the books, uh, you know, starting pages are. It's a little girl learning how to wear a sari. And, you know, after the story ends, continuing how to wear a sari. These are some tips that even some adults, especially some on the show, use <laughs> in order to be able to wear a sari effortlessly. Well, what is the story about? Well, it's the story of what your mother's sari can mean to you. Look at look at Nina Sabnani's gorgeous, dramatic uh, illustrations that sort of combine photographs and acrylic in such dramatic ways. So this is my mother's sari. What can it become? My mother's sari is like a train. And in each of the pages, different sari traditions. Look at this page. I mean, it's an absolute stunner. This, uh, you know, the page of what you can do. It fills the air with color when I dance and sing. And indeed, it does. Very spare text and, uh, you know, beautiful illustrations, absolutely combining various sari traditions to create this, uh, you know, wonderful book about your mother's sari and how special a mother's sari is and how many ways it can be used. It can be a train, <coughs> excuse me, it can be a river, it can be a swing, it can be a hiding place. And I do know, you know, there are many children out there who love playing with saris and making them into all, uh, you know, into different shapes and playing with them. This is a beautiful book. I'm not surprised that it won the, you know, uh, uh, you know, it, it was recognized by the United States Board on Books for Young People as one of the outstanding uh, international books for children many, many years ago. It still remains and has got to be one of our most precious books on uh, uh, sari. This one is published by Tulika. We would recommend it for three plus year olds and it's priced at 150 rupees. Our next book, uh, you know, is again uh, a beautiful one from Karadi called Sadik Wants to Stitch. Sadik, uh, you know, is a little Kashmiri boy and he loves stitching colorful patterns on rugs. However, uh, and you know, Mamta Neni, the author, uh, you know, and Nilufa Vadia, the illustrator, lovely messaging in the book where, uh, you know, um, his Ami reminds him that boys in their community don't really stitch. What they do is they tend to livestock. They look after the cows and they look after the, uh, you know, goats in the community. But what about Sadik? Sadik is determined to pursue his passion of wanting to stitch. The story is literally, it is actually set in the Bakarwal community of Kashmir. They, they are famous rug makers. And you can see, you know, amidst the dales and the hills, there's Sadik and his mother making and stitching a beautiful uh, rug. Now, how does Sadik follow his pattern? You can see this glorious illustration by uh, Nilifa Wadia of, uh, you know, the way the Bakarwal rugs are, uh, the Bakarwal rugs in Kashmir are, and, you know, uh, you know, going into the details of how the thread and what kind of stitch goes into making these rugs. But again, it's a fantastic story that stands gender stereotypes on the head. Oh, there is Sadik and he absolutely wants to stitch. And how does he go about? Is there like a circumstance in the story that allows him to follow his 
passion. I, I tell you, these books for children, they can, it's simply a matter of looking at them over and over again to understand how many contexts you can use them in. I mean, you're not merely telling the story of a boy who wants to stitch. You're also telling about the story of a community and their artistic tradition. You're also talking about boys who want to do things the, you know, not just boys, boys and girls who want to do things that are not conventional. So many lovely little subtle, uh, you know, ways in which these stories can be interpreted. There is a great, a lovely note about the Bakarwal community towards the end of this book. And this handsome one by uh, Mamta Naini and Nilofar Wadia priced at 399 rupees, available at our bazaar at special Indian prices. Like I said, we are focusing on books that, uh, you know, uh, that have Indian uh, weaving traditions in them. We're also focusing on books that have, uh, you know, that feature children wanting to wear different kinds of clothes. And we also have those books which have been embroidered together. Our next recommendation is a, is a simple uh, book from Miss Mochi Books. And this one is called Ramya's Fancy Dress Mess. Now, everybody knows that fancy dresses are where, you know, children or, uh, you know, can wear different kinds of clothes. And Ramya has to go to school for a fancy dress contest and they all can't wait for the big day. This book by Karish, Karishma Mehbubani has been illustrated by that wonderful animator illustrator Chetan Sharma. So the illustration simply just uh, happy illustrations that leap off the page fabulously. The thing is, you know, Ramya and her best friend, uh, you know, Anya, they, uh, you know, are trying to figure out what it is that they are going to wear for the fancy dress party. And I love the options that come up subsequently. As you can see, this delightful, cheery illustration where Ali wants to be a king. And Sam will pose as Milka Singh. Gul wants to wear a sari and Meenakshi wants to be a fairy. So you can see, you know, how each of the kids are thinking of what they are going to do. What about Ramya? Ramya, of course, imagines that, you know, maybe she wonders, Ramya wonders what to be. She thinks perhaps Gandhiji. Maybe I'll be a cop or a bunny that goes hop, hop, hop. Look at, you know, in lovely, you know, rhyming, uh, you know, lines, a story about what happens at Ramya's school's fancy dress, uh, Ramya's school's fancy dress uh, um, uh, event. And what happens, of course, I'm not going to give it away. As you can see, very, very, uh, you know, few words, a few lines of text in every page accompanied by uh, you know, big, bright illustrations. This can easily be read to two plus year old and can be read, uh, you know, by children themselves when they are a little older. Really funny story, Ramya's fancy dress mess. Our next, uh, you know, set of recommendations is in the, you know, in the tradition of two beautiful books that have been embroidered in a fantastic artistic tradition, the Zardozi tradition. There are two uh, books in this series, uh, you know, both written by Nanjini, Nandini Majumdar and each one, uh, you know, illustrated by different people, The River at Night, by Zarina Khatun, and in the case of Rain, the art by Rafia Bano. Now, what are, you know, as you can see, this is a story, a simple story of a river and what happens to the river at night. Now, what is so special about this, you know, delightful book of the river at night? Well, the entire story, and I'm going to show it as closely as possible. This entire, all these illustrations have been embroidered in Zardozi. The Zardozi, which is our artistic style from Banaras or Varnasi. And these artists are, uh, you know, craftspeople, weavers who specialize in the art of Zardozi. So the original Zardozi, as you know, all you all know, you know, includes go 
there's supposed to be gold and silver threads that will really dipped in gold and silver and with beads and sequins of course it uh, you know in in contemporary times i think it's been adapted in multiple ways and maybe we use uh, you know other kinds of beads and baubles along with the gold and silver threads what a wonderful way to introduce our youngest readers to a uh, uh, you know beautiful book embroidered in zardozi about a river at night ditto with rain this too you know is about whether it's going to it's hot and look at the look at the zardozi work of the sun there with sequins and beads and there are clouds and you know is it going to rain there's a lot of heat that is in these clouds and are they going to burst and are they going to is it going to rain a prick of a needle maybe a needle that is being used for zardozi and is it going to start pouring also the this artist too uh, you know rafia bano is a zardozi weaver and this entire story has been beautifully woven in zardozi published by tulika at you know absolutely astonishing prices of 60 i mean uh, published by ekalavya i'm sorry astonishing prices of uh, you know 60 and 45 rupees each why would it be hard to uh, you know introduce our children to artistic traditions when we have wonderful books like this available uh, you know for them i'm going to move to uh, my next set of recommendations and a bazaar that focuses on clothes uh, you know or fabrics would be incomplete without two of asha's delightful stories uh granny sari and wedding clothes i mean again i think there's got to be many many of you out there who absolutely know these books well granny sari is about a granny uh, uh, you know and her granddaughter and the sari that flies away uh, you know from the clothes line granny's beautiful sari that flies away from the clothes line and goes on an adventure of its own with the grandma and the granddaughter along with them granny and anu who go chasing the so uh, the sari that has gone off granny's clothes line what a charming story what a lovely uh, you know ending it has and you know such wonderful messaging tucked into our books that it really warms the cockles of the heart of readers young and old asha nehmeya certainly has that ability uh, you know in her stories granny sari focusing on a star, on a sari and wedding clothes about this giant man called gol matol ram now gol matol ram was the biggest man in the kingdom and he was taller than a coconut tree and broader than a banyan tree as you can see you know there's gol matol ram and suddenly the wedding of the princess of that land is announced now as you can see in this first illustration there are you know little patches of uh, you know the uh, gol matol's Ra ram's uh, shirt and trouser have gone threadbare and there are little patches that have been stitched on to them so now obviously he wants new clothes for the princess's wedding how will the biggest broadest man in the kingdom get uh you know new wedding clothes and of course he does in the most charming asha nehmeya uh, asha nehmeya ask way which only she can think of in a manner that will absolutely make you smile by the end of the story both these lovely books published by cbt and priced at 60 and 50 rupees each respectively granny sari illustrated by subir roy and wedding clothes illust uh, illustrated by prithvishwar gayen lovely books from cbt featuring clothes our next recommendation for the day is again a very very popular book called the runaway peacock i'm sure there's many many of us who uh, you know uh, know the story what is special about this Uh, you know wonderful uh, book is that written by niyati sharma and illustrated by shaila jain chogule is this 
gorgeous sari of mummies uh, and trisha is counting the peacocks on uh, you know the number of be beautiful peacocks on her mother's sari and what happens in as in a good fantasy book one of the peacocks simply just decides to run away from mummy's sari and go on an adventure of his own and my god what a glorious colorful adventure this is you can see you know in the bazaar you can see on an umbrella and you know in fact right through the book the shaila jain chogule has focused so much on what people wear city different kinds of clothes that people wear you know it's such a wonderful opportunity to point all these out to the youngest of readers when uh, you know um, uh, you know when you're narrating the story to them or when they are reading uh, you know these stories the thing is uh, you know of course what happens to the peacock does it come back to mummy sari or uh, you know does it have a field day going here there everywhere well it literally uh, you know the peacock he does go here there everywhere uh, from this gorgeous sari of mummies it's a beautiful book lends itself to being narrated fabulously well and this one published by tulika we would recommend for 4 plus year olds however you can read it out to a younger reader and you know uh, she or he will definitely enjoy uh, you know this um, story we read you say there's a, a wordless book from pratham called the little red string indeed there is a lovely uh, you know bo a book about a, a yarn of thread i'm afraid not in print so you can look it up on story weaver our next book famous famous book grandma baba's warm shawl it always uh, raises oohs and ahs from our office because there's just something so so lovely about grandma baba and her shawl well what is the story about it's about grandma baba who wants to knit something for herself with wool she lives very high on a mountain where there are many many sheep and the sheep are often shown for their wool she takes care of her flock of sheep and she makes sure that they are looked after very very well and their uh, you know uh, fur i mean their wool is shown periodically when there's too much on them so she decides one fine day that she is going to knit something for herself and you know in fact so so much like vipra said look how she dyes the sheep's wool in this book she actually dyes it by dipping it into beetroot juice absolutely you know there's not a single vegetables uh, dye that will not hold on cloth so you can try it with all kinds of veggies at home i mean you know use the brinjals use the capsicum try it see whether you know the colors are fast do they stick on fabric you can do it with little handkerchiefs what difference does it make if you have colorful patches on your handkerchief it's probably going to look even more colorful so she of course dips uh, you know her wool makes it red and starts to knit for herself but there are family members like the first time that it happens her own grandson comes running and asks for uh, you know something he wants a bright red sweater himself and of course grandma baba being a good grandma knits it for his uh, grandson and gives it to him so on i mean you know when she picks up the next uh, you know color and as you can see you know it's green and she's boiling spinach to get that color on the wool and she's going to knit uh, knit something for herself when her granddaughter comes running so on and so forth this wonderful book by rijuta ghate written and illustrated by rijuta ghate published by jyotsna prakashan and priced at 70 rupees oh yes so we of course have a clutch of more uh, you know books and i think we we can run through them we still have a bit of time and we might spill over by about 10 minutes maybe this one of course we can't you know in the tradition of books that have been uh, literally stitched together or illustrated by fabric mukund and riyas by nina sabnani i think there must have we must have 
possibly featured this in every bazaar that we have uh, you know done so far almost every bazaar because this a beautiful story of friendship between mukund and riyaz has been fabulously illustrated by uh, you know nina sabnani using fabric you know especially the kind of applique work that is common both to sindh and sindh in pakistan and gujarat in india and this is a story of two friends you know who are uh, you know divided by a border but can even just a line come between you know a a a, a true friendship fortunately never never and what a great way for nina sabnani to uh, to sort of um, let, let's say to you know visually uh, show the story by you know showing a tradition of shared crafts the same applique work done in sindh and done in gujarat you know which means just that little border between the two places she has taken this to illustrate the book so gorgeously in fact there's a there's a spread where she's made you know bottles of different kinds with different kinds of applique uh, you know fabric how beautiful is this i mean you know you can easily point out the nuances the shared memories of that the two uh, you know protagonists of the book have the shared histories of the two countries india and pakistan and the shared crafts between these countries it's such a precious book and we really want it at one point to be in every home in this country mukund and riyas uh, you know by nina sabnani published by tulika priced at uh, 150 rupees Our next book for the day is Daisy Dolls uh, you know which is again a wonderful book by uh, uh, Karadi Tales brought out by Karadi Tales written by Kao Weng Wengxuan and illustrated by Zhao Lei what is this the story of well it's the story uh, you know set in a little town in china where there lived a woman called Hua and what was Hua Hua was the best doll maker in town and you know gosh this history of dolls you know doll traditions in india as well dolls that are made of uh, you know indian fabrics now who are makes different kinds of dolls that children uh, you know in this little village in china uh, absolutely love and adore now what is what is special about who has dolls now who lives in this village which has beautiful daisy fields everywhere so every doll of hers when it's finished up will get a little daisy on it that's how daisy dolls and what is so special about these dolls now for instance a mum comes to hua she knows you know she she feels very sad when every one of her dolls goes away into homes but she knows that each one of these dolls will make the children happy in some way or the other for <coughs> for instance and i and this is where i think the context is lovely for our children as well uh, she makes a doll because uh, you know for li jun who's very afraid of the dark and you know her mum comes to uh, you know to hua and says please make a doll for him so she makes a doll with uh, with dark liquid eyes and a soft smile when she finished sewing the daisy on the uh, doll she whispered into the doll's ears go to li jun and be by his side every night until it's light again and then handed over the doll to li jun and his mother Lee Jun, Joanne Saldana, the book blew me away. The storyline and the illustrations, absolutely, Joanne, beautiful illustrations. And it goes on to say, Lee Lee Jun was never afraid of the dark after that. Now, what happens to all of Hua's dolls? Do they find homes? Does she have a doll for herself? It's a beautiful story, and each of these dolls you can see in the illustrations have been. stitched with beads and buttons and lace and you know the, these wonderful illustrations uh, you know doing fab you know so much justice to this gorgeous book uh, daisy dolls published by karadi a hardback book at 399 rupees i know i have a 
whole bunch of other books but of you know we're going we are going to run out of time so i'll focus on one or two that are for older kids as well but i will uh, you know can't go off without talking about the wonderful ismat's eid oh my gosh what a glorious book this is really by fawzia gilani williams is there you know i mean there's not a book of hers that doesn't delight right there is uh, you know adil ali's new shoes which we love and the new one henna on my hands such lovely stories uh, you know that reflect the traditions the clothes the customs and the ways of life of a particular community and the you know the absolutely you know beautiful values of caring and sharing that come through wonderfully through fawzia gilani williams's stories now ismat's eid is about ismat who wants to you know uh, get new clothes for his family he's a shoemaker and eid is coming up and he wants to get uh, new clothes for each of his family members so he dashes off to the shop gets a burqa for his wife and a dupatta for his mother and some bangles for his daughter and of course he notices then uh, sunila kulkarni you say such a heartwarming book it indeed is such a heartwarming book really right and then he notices uh, you know we read said we absolutely love this one so much to love in this wonderful book by fawzia gilani williams when he has all these gifts he notices that his own trousers are quite tattered and he decides that he's going to rush to the store and get a trouser for himself but of course when he goes to the store the trouser that he gets is a couple of sizes too long for him what happens when everybody is wearing new clothes you know can ismat wear his new trouser it is uh, you know the book has you in chuckles about what happens uh, you know with ismat's trouser does it get done does it get stitched to the correct size mm, you know that that ability to laugh you know at once absolutely conveys the warmth and affection of this beautiful story ismat's eid uh, as i said written by fawzia gilani williams and illustrated by proiti roy this one is uh, you know priced at 175 rupees i will move on to a couple of books for older kids uh but before i go there's this lovely little one from cbt which is just about clothes about the clothes about a clothes monster now my god don't we know the clothes monster ourselves well so does rohit the little hero of this book he changes his clothes throws them right down on the floor and rushes off to play despite his mum you know telling him to put them away in the correct in the correct place now after a point mum decides that she is just not going to keep putting his clothes back and what happens clothes start to get piled up more and more and more and more till the clothes pile becomes a clothes monster what a lovely story for our youngest readers written by sheril rao illustrated by ankur mitra and priced at 35 rupees published by cbt the older books that we had and as i said there were many other books i'm just going to just show them to you there are two there's the scarecrows on a parade and what did nepo do with a sari surprisingly two books dealing with scarecrows and clothes so a lovely uh, you know combination if ever there was one one published by katha and the other by pratham there's amama sari which all of you know of by nivedita uh, subramanian a beautiful book about what a grandma sari can mean and again the fabulous textures of different kinds of sarees going on to make the illustrations in this beautiful book so many uh, messages woven into it upcycling india we have been upcycling for ages forever and ever really reusing bottles reusing milk packets reusing carton dabbas so absolutely saree also cannot be put away it can be put you know to so many many uses beautiful book that many of you i'm sure are familiar with it's a wordless picture book which means absolutely a new born infant can be shown these uh, uh, pictures and you can narrate a story 
published by Tulika, priced at 165 rupees. There's the Naya sweater, which is bilingual in uh, English and Hindi, about a young rag picker girl who wants to buy a new sweater. So there is a piece of fabric. And as you can see in the cover, you know, this one written by Paptu Durve and, you know, illustrated by Saumya Menon, the story of a young rag picker girl who wants to get herself a Naya sweater. So many layers in this one story, uh, you know, at once, you know, uh, you know, where, you know, how hard it is for a rag picking family to be able to afford it. But if you think it's a story of grief, a new sweater. Again, published by Ekalavya and priced at 48 rupees. There's Gutli Has Wings, which is a beautiful story for Diwali. We urge lots of you to pick this one up, uh, you know, written by Kanak, written and illustrated by Kanak uh, Shashi, Shashi, about this little boy who absolutely wants to wear his uh, sister's frock. It's Diwali. She's got a new frock uh, for Diwali and Gutli wants to wear the frock. Uh, what happens initially is everybody, it's Diwali day, everybody is busy decorating the house, people are making rangolis and there are new clothes to be worn and Gutli of course just wears, uh, you know, he's a happy child and he wears his sister's frock. Now, the thing is, everybody laughs and, uh, you know, either laughs or shouts at him. And, you know, his, his mom tells him that it is not for you. The frock is not for you. It is for your sister. And Guthli says, you know, I, I absolutely do want to wear that frock. And that explanation which his mother gives him saying boys are boys and girls are girls simply doesn't make sense to Guthli. Arundhati Nath, you say you love this one. I bought it from Funky Rainbow a few months ago. Fabulous book on the gender spectrum and about clothes and what we think defines, uh, you know, a particular, uh, you know, that defines what boys have to wear, what girls have to wear. Why don't we adopt a more fluid approach to these things. Fantastic book set in the context of Diwali. And I think it's a great read. We live in a diverse world and our children have to be introduced to more and more diverse characters, uh, you know, on this spectrum. This one priced at 165 rupees. There is one called Not My Long uh, Blue Skirt by Nandini Nair and illustrated by Darshika Varma about a little girl, about a little princess called Uma and her, uh, you know, big blue skirt. But the books, and this is from Miss Muchi, priced at, uh, you know, 175 rupees, meant for five plus year olds. I'll quickly just you know, uh, rush through a couple of, uh, you know, uh, books, two, three of them that are meant for older readers. You know, people often think that we only, uh, you know, showcase books for younger readers. That's not true. Several books that we put out in the bazaar and they're meant for children in all age groups going up to a young adult audience or even an adult audience. So please do click uh, you know, go to our website, www.funkyrainbow.com, click on the tab that says Bazaar, click on Fab Fabrics and all the books that we have, uh, you know, put out for this Bazaar available at special discounted prices for an entire week. There's A for Ajrak, which is the A to Z of block printing. What a beautiful book it is by Nina Sabnani. Who else could have written this magnificent book that, uh, you know, uh, gives you the alphabet by way of different wonderful block printing traditions. There's A for Ajrak, as you can see. And just uh, in keeping with the theme of the bazaar, I had to wear Ajrak myself because this was pretty much the starting point of Mutama and my uh, discussion about this fabric bazaar. And, you know, very happily for us, uh, you know, Remy Rusha, uh, you know, has picked up A for Ajrak and is selling, I mean, you know, giving it along with every sari uh, that's part of her Bloom collection. A great shout out goes to her because this is the way books have to be matched with everything that we do, really. 
Uh, and so there's A for Ajrak, there is, you know, there is B for Bag, there is C for Chippa. I'm sure there are several traditions, block printing traditions in this that, you know, even adults' eyes will be opened to the fabulous, diverse, uh, you know, textile spectrum of India. It's a it's a keeper. This book is absolutely a keeper, not just for children, for adults as well. And please do teach them these ABCs so they can get to appreciate our own, uh, you know, artistic traditions better. We would recommend it for 10 plus year old readers. And this one is priced at 265 rupees. A slim chit of a book called Saffron Picking Khadi Weaving Exploring Eight Eco Traditions of India, written by Sheila Prout and illustrate, I mean, and Prabha Ram, and illustrated by Lavanya Karthik, priced at 125 rupees, published by Mango. Why have we picked this? Because there is an entire segment in the book that has deals with various textile traditions of India. You can already see that there's Khadi picking. In, I mean, Khadi weaving in, uh, you know, on the cover of the book, there is Pashmina of Ladakh, there is Indigo of Bagru, and the Khadi of Punduru that are all focused on this beautiful book that introduces different, uh, you know, art and craft and environmentally, uh, you know, friendly art and craft traditions of India to young readers. We would easily recommend this for seven plus year olds from Mango. Not, not that many illustrations in the book. There are a few, of course, you know, usually at the beginning of each page, it's a beautiful, uh, uh, you know, book that tells you how eco-friendly our artistic traditions are. Like much like Vipra said, from here, there, everywhere, you are drawing from nature, you're drawing from everything that's right in our midst. And I, I particularly love, uh, you know, the, the segments on textiles, as I said, Pashmina of Ladakh, Indigo of Bagru, and Khadi of Ponduru in this marvelous gem of a book for seven plus year olds. From that Pashmina to this Pashmina, a graphic novel much fetted by the New York Times, written and illustrated by Nidhi Chanani. It's a graphic novel and the graphic narrative style is first class. It's really an, a, you know, appealing uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, comic and graphic format that really keeps the story going. What is this story of Pashmina about? It's about a girl who makes her way back to India. She's an Indian, but has grown up and, uh, you know, uh, has been brought up in the US. And there's a shawl, a Pashmina shawl of her mother's that sparks off this journey back to India to trace her cultural roots. The thing is, when she comes to India, is it only, you know, everything, everything rosy and colorful and, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, lies in wait? What we really like about the fact uh, about this book is that it introduces, uh, you know, a contemporary India to, uh, you know, uh, young adult readers. We would recommend this for 13 plus year olds or maybe even 14 plus year olds. It, uh, you know, tells you of the way contemporary India is. There are, it has its ups, it has its downs, it has its, uh, you know, high points and it has its terrible lows. And the protagonist of this, this, uh, this uh, graphic novel discovers India, uh, you know, and is confounded on, you know, how she's going to be able to juggle two cultures and two worlds. But the Pashmina, which is the you know, eponymous of the title of the book, plays a critical role in this wonderful graphic novel. It was recommended and very, uh, you know, uh, reviewed widely, especially with the New York Times giving it a glowing review. Of course, uh, you know, our last book, which we couldn't, uh, you know, we could not not include in this fab fabric bazaar, Kancha Ilaya, a wonderful activist writer, his book, Turning the Pot, Tilling the Land, Dignity of Labor in Our Times, a must read for young adults and adults. We would recommend it for everybody 15 plus. One, it's written by, uh, you know, Kancha Ilaya, and it's illustrated by Durga Bhai Vyam, whose work you are very familiar with in 
you know, through many other books of Tara. Now, what is the book about? It's about different uh, professions. You know, Kancha Ilaya throws light on the science and art and skills of Adivasis, cattle rearers, leather workers, potters, farmers, and there's a particular segment on weavers and dhobis who work with clothes. What a what a great way to introduce young readers to you know uh, you know different realities in India, different strata of society, different you know uh, the fact that each one contributes to making us who we are, making our country who we are. It's a it's a very very I mean you know there's lots of illustrations in the book. Uh, you, as you can see by, uh, you know, the folk artist Durga Bai Vyam and, you know, trying to instill in us a sense of dignity of labor, which is absolutely important. And it's is something that we must all embrace. We have put it into this bazaar because of the specific segments on weavers, which is very eye opening and dhobis and, you know, Kancha Ilaya being the strong, powerful writer that he is, you know, there are segments on labor as life, labor and religion, labor and gender. This is a must read book from Navayana, uh, you know, meant for young adult and adult readers priced at 300 rupees. Now, these were the array of recommendations on fabrics of all kinds at our bazaars. I'm going to say a quick uh, you know, round of hello, uh, round of hello to different people who've joined us. Ramna Atri, what a pleasure to see you here. Remy Rusha Sen, thank you so much for joining us. Shout, shout outs going out to you for combining your saris with A for Ajrak. Sindhu Pillai, thank you for joining us. You, uh, you know, Mutama tells me you're an award-winning teacher from Choice School Kuchin. What a pleasure that you have joined us at this bazaar. Our, uh, you know, uh, efforts at Funky Rainbow, you know, it, it is to introduce Indian children's books to children all across, to adults and children all across the country. And we're delighted that a teacher from Choice School has joined us. Divya Purandar, dear friend, thank you for being here. We read, what a pleasure. Thank you for recommending lovely books uh, as well. Sheena John, we love your school and thank you for supporting us in everything we do. Samir Mahale, thank you. Sohini Mitra, we have to send some recommendations for your seven-year-old. And if there are some books from this bazaar that interest you, please do send us a WhatsApp message to let us know which ones might interest your son. Vinod Kumar, Pallavi Mahale, Jyoti Narayan, Priya Muttu Kumar, Poonam, Poonam Jetani, Fairoz Kadar, Arundhati Nath. Such a pleasure that you join us, uh, you know, week after week, whenever you can. Guvara, is that a Shea Guvara? Sorry, we read. This is the first bazaar that we've been able to attend and have loved it. Thank you, we read. We do a bazaar every Saturday from 11 to 1. And we have been, uh, you know, doing it them thematically or by genres. I mean, you know, the whole idea being we have more than 7,500 books in our collection. And here's a great opportunity to introduce it to people here, there, and everywhere so that it, le le you know, it reaches children here, there, everywhere as well. Guvara. Okay, so it says Gautam Guvara. So we thought may, that may have been a Che, but <laughs> that is lovely. Sudha. Trina Mitra, what a pleasure. Gayatri Mambra, lovely that you've joined us at the bazaar after Sham's niece and the winner of our great quiz. It's a pleasure that young people, uh, you know, are joining us at our bazaar as well. Nitya Devaya, Mutama's cousin, Neil Jaryal, Padma Jagdish and Achu Cheeks. What a lovely pleasure, uh, you know, to have all of you here. Shravya Chaudhary, Mahua's Musings, Jeeva Raghunath, my gosh, you should be telling the stories that we are telling by focusing on books in this bazaar. Thank you so much, Jeeva, for being here with us. I can't tell you what a giant but it is on our backs that you have come to attend our bazaar. And we really hope one day we'll be doing it from somewhere in Madras with you telling some fantastic stories. Thank you so much for being here. Sindhu, what a pleasure. 
Thanks, one and all. Once again, we wish you a wonderful festive season. It's Navratri, the week, uh, you know, it's the first uh, day of Navratri. And going from here through a whole host of festivals, Navratri, Diwali, Eid, Christmas and Sankranti, we only wish for bounty of books that comes your way. And we would be delighted if some of those books come to you from Funky Rainbow and color your homes and your festivities in different ways. Mm -hmm.